It's time to get right back into Jimmy Stein's world famous Alabama countdown. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and thank you for making this your first listen every single day. You guys are the absolute best, as Jimmy bows to you, our loyal servants. Um, Or maybe Jimmy would be the servant. I don't know either. I'm glad glad to serve. Not here to protect and serve, just to serve. Just to serve. No protection. Uh, Yeah, y'all do the protecting. Uh, So, Jimmy, let's get back into your countdown. Uh, some things have settled down in terms of the coaching staff. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, yeah, we haven't hired a few people that we need to hire, but some things have settled down. Recruiting's sort of in a lull right now. That's yeah. nationwide. They're making so a lot of 2025 20, offers right now. That's what's going on right now for people now because recruiting never stops. But evaluating yeah. and making offers, keep in mind a lot of these offers are contingent. When people say contingent on what? Well, a few things, but here's the primary thing. A lot of kids get offers but, but really what the offer is, is we are offering you a scholarship. Please come to our camp if yeah. you ever want to hear from us again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what it really kind of means. Well, that's for some of us. That's, that's a great question for later. Will this staff be as stringent about you need to come to camp uh, to get a true offer? Uh, now, of course, Alabama, for Ryan Williams, he doesn't have to go to camp at all. He could go to Camp Lejeune right. and everybody'd be like, "Yeah, we're still offering you. We don't care." Um, anybody yeah, think my Camp Lejeune movies. joke? A great analogy is me. <laughs> yeah, I did get the. Yeah, I know. I'm a, I'm a lawyer. I know about Camp Lejeune. <laughs> uh, I, I uh, you know, a great way to explain offers is movie roles. You know, like, hey, it's Mission Impossible. You know, Tom Cruise does not have to audition to be the star of Mission Impossible. He does not. Uh, and neither does his little team, the guy, the same guys that are in every movie. Uh, but everyone else has to audition for roles. And that's exactly what, what camp is like. I mean, if you're Tom Cruise, then you don't have to come to camp. Uh, pretty much. I mean, and we all know what the list, the A-list is, right? A-list doesn't have to come to audition or come to camp. Everyone else does. So, uh, and yes, to answer your question, Luke, that started it, um, we have found out uh, or that the initial idea is the idea is they want all the kids that they're offering to come to camp. So coming to camp is going to be vitally important to Kalen DeBoer uh, and his staff, just like it was for Saban. They feel that the Alabama brand can get kids to camp. They say that they wanted all the Washington kids to come to camp, but because it's so far to travel for so many of them, they couldn't, they couldn't mandate it to kids like you can in Alabama because Alabama is going to be a lot closer and easier to get to for a lot of the kids that we're recruiting. But at Washington, it wasn't. So they couldn't really tell kids, hey, if you want to be here, you better come to our camp because kids are like, well, well how am I going to take seven Greyhounds and three and three subways to get to Seattle? Um, so from, from where they were. So yeah, the answer is yes. Now, again, go back to the Tom Cruise analogy. They'll evaluate kids and sort of grade them, and there'll be a certain grade of kids that 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 don't have to come prove it in camp because they're so obvious on tape. Uh, and, and you know, again, that's going to be uh, relatively a short list. All right, so let's get into the countdown, Jimmy. Um, Quay Rusal is. I'm not. Tell me what number this is, by the way. Or right, he's on number 48. 48, I believe. The 48. Right, so Quay Rusal. Yeah. Quay Russo at number 48, it feels like he's been in Alabama for three or four years because he and James Smith, their recruiting was just so interesting. They were two five stars on the same team in Montgomery, Alabama. And, uh, you know, Auburn at the time was trying to get in on them as best they could. And, um, you know, they they stuck with their Alabama commitments and signed with Alabama, obviously. And I think it, people expected more out of them last year, which was their freshman years. People probably expected a little more out of them. Uh, Quay Russell played. James Smith played. Probably not as much as we both thought. But uh, Quay Russell, of the two, I think played less. I don't know the actual minutes. Correct. Um, Correct. 
But uh, regardless, I just, you know, do you feel like he's set for a big leap in, in, in 2024? Yeah, there, he's a real interesting kid to talk about for that reason. Uh, look, if if I was – and this is based on what we hear from the practice fields, okay? So this is based on conversations with people who are at practice all the time. Um, Rousseau probably is behind, even though they don't necessarily set this pecking order. Uh, Rousseau is probably behind Keon Keeley and Jan Pierre. That's why he's behind them in these rankings. And in the rankings, as I've laid them out, Rousseau's behind – both Pierre and Keeley. Uh, all three of them are behind the outside linebacker group who has actually played in the games, you know, a lot more often. Uh, Quay Robinson, you know, near the top. Uh, Keanu Coote, he's near the top. Uh, Jeremiah Alexander, of course, but he's moved to inside linebacker. So Rousseau is pretty low in the rankings for this reason because he didn't show as much as the other two guys that were redshirted, and they're all behind the guys that play. Right. So he's pretty low on the rankings. But I would say Quay Russo is a guy this spring, Luke, who's an excellent candidate for, OK, who's going to make the big jump? Seems like every spring someone comes from near the bottom of this list to way up the list because they had one heck of a spring and are clearly going to be a, a thing this fall. Quay is a good candidate for that. Uh, so, so that's why it's so interesting to watch. I've got to rank him low. To me, it makes perfect sense to rank him low based on what we know. This ranking is based on what we've seen on the playing field or what we've heard from the practice fields. So he's going to be low. But if we did a list of, okay, guys who haven't done anything yet, but are going to be a thing this fall, he would be on that list. So would Yonze Pierre. So would Keon Keely. And, uh, we got Pierre coming up next, <laughs> and uh, Keely, uh, Keely, uh, a couple of days from now. Yeah, I think if you were to say, if you were to rank this based on potential, you'd probably have Quay Russo in the top fifteen. Uh, Fair, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he would be up there in terms. If we were doing a ranking of okay, let's do one based on nothing but pure talent level, pure upside. Who's mm-hmm. got the highest ceiling? He would be way up there. One thing that I'm not sure should set him back or push him up is the very real possibility that this new staff will move him inside. Uh, He played outside under Saban, recruited to play outside. He did play outside linebacker uh, this past fall uh, on the practice field. That's where he played. He didn't didn't see any playing time or any practice time inside. He may move inside with this new staff. Will that improve his chances to play? I, I don't know. That's hard to say. Uh, but personally, uh, I think is a lot like Jeremiah Alexander, a guy who he's just a real good football player and a good athlete to play inside or outside and kind of play him where you need him the most. Yeah, Jeremiah, I guess, will be on your list a little later on. That's yeah. another interesting case for sure. Um, yeah. Boy, older, you really so. want some of these in-state five stars to start panning out. But, Jimmy, when we come back, we're going to talk about one of the more exciting players, I think at least one of the more talked about players in Yanzi Pierre. Right now, though, I want to tell you about FanDuel. The Super Bowl's over, but that doesn't matter. FanDuel's going on all the time. FanDuel has got it going on all the time. All you got to do is go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. It's in the overlay I'm, trying, overlay I'm trying to find right here. There it is, FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 smacks if your bet wins. You can't beat that with a stick. You can beat an egg. You can beat a bush. You can't beat that. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets or live same-game parlays or exclusive plot props. These player props are so much fun. They have team props too, obviously, but the player props are really what's cool. And if look, I've been having a lot of fun with the Brandon Miller player props and uh, winning some cash. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel is an official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Uh, Jimmy, Yanzi Pierre. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a, a fine young gentleman from uh, the Eufaula area. And uh, he is uh, – a lot of people thought he'd come in this past year and play. 
and play a lot. And it just didn't materialize. That's okay. He, a lot of people also understood that he's raw, uh, that he isn't necessarily as, uh, I, I guess, technically sound, even though I'm, I'm not going to pretend that I could point out a lot of places where his technique is lacking. I'm just saying that I, I think he was looked at as a bit of a project that may also be an instant phenom. The instant phenom thing did not happen. It doesn't mean it won't happen next year. Yeah, I think anybody that looks into Keon Keeley, uh, Jan Zapierre, and Quay Russo on our plan last year uh, as some sort of uh, sign that, that they're all overhyped, uh, I would just say look at Chris Braswell, who – who I heard yesterday, Mel Kuyper on ESPN, on first draft on ESPN, uh, Mel Kuyper discussed Chris Braswell uh, as a guy that could uh, that could get into the first round uh, of the draft. And Chris Braswell didn't play a single snap when he was a, a true freshman and redshirted and then played very little in year two uh, and then played barely more in year three. I mean, he was just, in terms of becoming a premier NFL prospect, it just took him a, it just took him a while. And, and here he is. And and I would say, and since he may go in the first round, uh, that he did live up to a five-star rating, despite not playing at all very early in his career. So I would say uh, Quay, Yonsei, and Keon Keeley are, are all in that boat and all could end up blossoming no differently than Braswell did. Now, Yonsei specifically, uh, I think he will stick outside. I just talked about Quay potentially moving inside. I don't think Yonze is going to be moved anywhere. I think he's just an outside guy because you, you've got to have this dude rushing the passer. He's outstanding. Uh, he's relentless. Uh, he can also, as he's growing larger, is going to be a good set the edge type guy. Uh, I think in the new scheme, Yonze is a wolf this spring who may grow into a bandit over time. He's first cousins with Courtney Upshaw. Uh, I find them so similar. I mean, I, I think – Yonsei and Courtney are more like brothers than cousins. I mean, in terms of Courtney, I, I, I Courtney's a bit identity. bigger, maybe. He grew bigger over time, yeah. but they were the, basically the same age, the okay. same sizes at the same age. Uh, as seniors, as freshmen at Alabama, they're really the same size. Now, Courtney grew tremendously during his time at Alabama and especially after. Uh, I think Yonsei could, could grow the same way. That's what I'm saying. Yonze is more of the smaller edge pass rusher. Now he may grow more into that bandit, which is a 265 pound, 270 pound player is kind of ideal for that bandit spot. Yonze could easily grow that big. Although our understanding right now is he's around 225. I mean, he's, he's 30, 40 pounds short of that, but Courtney, Courtney played in the NFL at 290 at one point. So wow. Uh, okay. let, let's see what uh, let's see how how it works for Yonsei, but I'm still very high on him, and again a great candidate. Just like we talked about Quay, Ru Quay Russo, Yonsei may be down here as the 47th best player on the roster today. After the spring, that number could easily be in the 20s. Yeah, and we did get spoiled by guys who. Uh, had a lot of five-star hype. They come in and they're immediately superstar. I mean, Amika Fitzpatrick comes to mind. Um, a guy who just, I mean, immediately like, whoa, he, he's even better than we thought, five-star plus. But um, then you get a five-star like a Yanzi Pierre, like a Quay Russo, and they don't come in and make a lot of waves and you immediately label them, you know, a, a Tyler Love. A, no, no disrespect to Tyler Love, but he was a five-star that didn't pan out. And um, it's a, uh, it's not fair, uh, especially when you look and you see, okay, uh, who was ahead of Yonzi Pierre? Well, Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell, uh, two dudes that are going in the first round of the NFL draft probably. So uh, not exactly uh, the easiest rotation to crack. Oh, sorry. Hello? I had to unmute there. I had to unmute myself. I had to mute myself there for a little, a little uh, cough. So that's what uh, it feels like. <laughs> when you be on the other unmute. side. It does, and it and it did take a little bit longer than I thought to get that unmuted. But uh, you know, what, what did you just say about Pierre? I lost it in in the midst of my tuberculosis. I said a little tuberculosis. What I was saying was, it's not fair to judge him yeah. not cracking the rotation when Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell are in front of you. 
No, oh, that's that's exactly right. Heck, you could even say that about Tyler Love. I remember my good buddy and my uh, uh, fellow on three uh, uh, whiz Tim Watts one time years ago said when Tyler Love went panning out when some, someone with us when Tyler was still on the roster, and someone was oh, saying uh, in a meeting like, "Like boy, Tyler Love, he's a bust. He's not on the field." Tim's like, "The two guys starting in front of him are five stars who are first round picks." Yeah, I mean the the guys that are were in front of him the whole time were also five stars in first round picks. Uh, he said, I mean, getting not getting on the field at Nick Saban's Alabama, frankly, didn't mean a whole lot. Uh, and and it's sort of that way right now. So look, Yonze, I, I'm very excited that Yonze's on the team and and Quay Russo both. And and again, they're they're just excellent candidates to make major moves. Let's also talk about how hey, new staff, new eyes, new opinions. The new staff's going to come in and they're going to have different opinions about these guys than the old staff did. That's just normal. And some guys that we previously thought might be a big deal, the new staff may go, ah, I'm not so sure about him. Whereas other guys that were kind of buried on the depth chart, the staff might go, well, here's our dude right here. Uh, this is extremely common in football. Uh, and, and again, new new staff, new eyes, new opinions. Yeah, I I'm excited about the two guys we've talked about today. I really am. I think they've got a lot ton of potential. Um, I feel like uh, my excitement is renewed because no doubt my excitement waned midway through the season when they weren't going to make a move. And you could tell, okay, it's not happening. There's no doubt that I started turning my attention to some of the other dudes that uh, I thought, okay, or maybe even guys that were in this signing class. And um, now I feel like with the new staff, maybe they get, Right. Uh, restart and uh, not that they necessarily need it. Cause that's not even fair either. They've only been there a, a year, not even a full year. So, um, yeah, not even full but, year. but I feel like I'm, I'm reignited about these two again. And, and keep in mind this, you know, and, and since they likely won't be starters this fall, Alabama's number one outside linebacker this fall is likely to be Quindarius Robinson. I think he'll be number one in terms of the outside linebacker that plays the most and is the best player and is one of the better players on the defense. I think it's going to be him. What was he like in high school? Well, the state's top prospect, and I think he was a five-star. I'm not sure. Uh, I believe it was so long ago now. But he was – I remember clearly uh, at some points during that final senior season, he was uh, rated the number one prospect in Alabama. Took him a while, too. Uh, he had to gain some considerable size. And, man, uh, I, I talked to somebody who was at practice – uh, this fall, I wasn't there, but I talked to somebody who was at practice, and that's the guy they came off the field talked about. They're like, mm -hmm. they're like, how come thirty four doesn't play more? And I'm like, because he's behind Dallas Turner <laughs> and Chris Braswell. And they're like, oh well, I guess that explains it. He's like, thirty four looks like a million bucks. You know, he, he reminds me of, and of course, of course, we'll have Quandarius Robinson Day about two, two or three weeks from now. Uh, he, I think he can be a Carlos Dansby type player. It's kind of who he reminds me of physically is Auburn's Carlos Dansby, who had, by the way, a fantastic NFL career, uh, primarily Jeez. with the Cardinals. And uh, I mean, he's, you know what? C Carlos Dansby is sort of the Robert Ori of the NFL, not in the sense that he won as many rings, but in the sense that he just was around so long and he was he was so steadily good. Like he's bored. He's not going to make the Hall of Fame or anything, but he's, you're like, holy cow, his career was long and very successful. I bet he has a million NFL tackles and a half a million sacks because he played so long. But anyway, I think uh, uh, Q Robinson, Q Robinson's a lot like him in terms of their length, their athleticism. Uh, I, again, I'm, I'm sky high on the type of season that Quandarius Robinson can have, and he will be the reason that we likely don't see a ton of Yonze Pierre and Keon Keeley. They're, they're just not as mature and ready to play as, as Q, who will be in, I believe, year five. All right, Jimmy, when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, one of the offensive linemen, one of our international stars. 
But right now, I want to tell you about eBay Motors, and I'm going to find that overlay too. There it is right there. It should be popping up. There it is right there. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much, much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time with or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber. You ain't burning cash like some kind of moron. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that big old win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. And eBay mo guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. All right. Time to talk about Olas Alanen. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm saying yeah. that correct? Yeah, it is um, Olas Alanen because uh, I'm sure we pronounced it differently when we were recruiting him until we know, knew better. But uh, <laughs> it was... Uh, the first well, thing when you have to go to Reykjavik to, to find your offensive lineman, I'm sure he, you know, I love Olas. Pressing polar ice caps. I love Olas. And let me tell you, he could be a solution to, you know, look, there's issues on Alabama's offensive line. We all know that. I think it's the number one question going into 2024 is the offensive line. And it's because you have some proven guys, Booker, even Parker Brailsford, the new center, Jaden Roberts, proven. Other two spots, not proven at all. And I think if you ask any smart Alabama fan, and we know you're a smart Alabama fan if you're listening to this, because otherwise you wouldn't have found or know our show. Uh, the smart Alabama fans listen to the show will all tell you, well, Alabama's got to find an offensive lineman or two in the portal this spring. Everybody says that. I agree a million percent. But you know what? A kid like Olas or Wilkin Formby or Miles McVeigh or Nickel Bertrand – they might play this spring in a way that where the staff is like, whoa, I don't know that we're going to find a, a guy in the portal any better than this guy. And Olas has that chance this spring. And I, I don't rule that out. Now, I'm not predicting it. I will tell you, and I agree with all you guys. Hey, they got to go to the portal and find offensive linemen. I'm just saying, let's check out Olas this spring first. Now, he, he spent this entire past year redshirting at guard, but he's got great positional versatility. Uh, I think he could play center guard or tackle. And, again, it's all about getting your best five on the field. It should not shock anyone that Olas proves this spring that he's one of Alabama's best five and a guy you can count on in the fall. Uh, it shouldn't shock anyone. Now, most linemen take longer to develop in college than just the one year that Olas has been on campus. The, that I think the reasonable projection would be that Olas is a future starter at Alabama, just probably not in 2024. That's the most reasonable projection and the most likely thing that happens. But he could be ready sooner than we think, or he could be a late bloomer, one or the other. I do know this from talks to people inside the program. They are high on Olas. They they are high on him. If you ask if you ask them about, okay, the young lineman, I mean, who, who's who's a good bet? Olas is the name that comes up. I mean, so they, they like him, uh, works hard, uh, well-trained. Good kid, easily recognizable. Seen him around campus a couple of times. He's not one that you go, see, every now and then you see football players, you're not sure when they're not in their uniform or not wearing their number. You're like, yeah, he's on the team. I can't, I'm not sure which one he is. Uh, Olas is not, oh, he, you don't confuse him with other students either. <laughs> like, you see him from 150 yards away and you're like, uh, that over there, that is Olas. You're like, is that a, is that a locomotive headlight coming at me? Oh no, that's Olos Allen. And he's uh he probably you know needs to work on his Alabama tan a little bit. That's all right. Um I saw his dad once too. Uh his dad. I saw his dad in Bama Fever in Tuscaloosa. His dad is absolutely one of the largest human beings I've ever been in the press. I can't believe he's not a professional wrestler. I mean what did he do? Did you ask him? Was he the accountant? That'd be hilarious. I didn't talk to him. I, I, I did my I did my shy thing and didn't. But I, I knew exactly who he was. There's no mistaking it. Uh, he was a pro, pro football player in uh, NFL yeah. Europe. Uh, if well, he did something beyond that, I don't know. I know I know this. Olas is huge. The dad is bigger. The dad is bigger than Olas. Oh oh, the dad's 
I would, I was going to say significantly bigger. That sounds crazy, but I, I want to say significantly bigger. Dad's just a huge. If you said bigger. slightly bigger, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. This is like, and he looks like he could play, even though he's clearly older, but he looks like he could play. I mean, he stayed in shape. I think Olas's dad is still lifting. And by lifting, I mean Buicks. <laughs> uh, he's probably in those strongman, you know, those strongman competitions they have in Northern Europe, you know, the like where the they chop down man. redwoods with their palms and <laughs> strongest man in the world type stuff. He's yeah. he's got to be in the running for that, those type titles. Oh, that that'd be so cool if like you I was just watching the Ocho one night and I saw Olaf Allenin's dad. Uh but I really want Olaf Allenin to to kick butt. I mean, when you think about, you know, you get him going, you get uh the the Steve Steve from Steve, Steve M from Canada. Uh Steve, that uh, you get uh the uh Oko Rono. Am I saying Oko Ronquo? Oko Ronquo. Oko Ronquo you know, from Germany. Um, and there's one other one I'm missing. Um, uh, in terms of like, not from here? International flavor, yeah. James um, Burner, the Australian punter? Yeah, from Australian. Oh, my God. How? I mean, look, just the marketing guy in me is like, that is so brand awesome. That is <laughs> that is just brand awesome for us, for Alabama as a university. So, um, I, I, don't, I mean, I want them to play if they're the best. I don't want them to play just because they're, you know, from NATO, but I, I want them to uh I want them to play if they're the best. But I think if they are the best, it's just like I said with Jalen Milrow. It's so much better for Alabama if Jalen Milrow is the number one quarterback and is worthy of that spot, which he was last year. It was a it's a much better story than any other quarterback on the roster. Well, now you know Austin Mack may be a better story, but I think Jalen Milrow is the better quarterback. But uh, how about this? Uh, I'll throw this out there while it's in my head. You know how Terry on Arnold kind of became the fan favorite this year just due to interviews and people yeah. love him. And then he got on five mom and Terry on kind of became the fans favorite player because of all that. This year, now this Tyler Booker is a clear candidate for that because Booker was sort of a one B to Terry on's one a anyway, and, and he's yeah. coming back, but the new guy that may replace Terry on justice Haynes justice really? is also fantastic in front of the media. Uh, he is, he's just one of those guys that you want to be the face of the program. He's humble. He's intelligent. Uh, he is, uh, a football guy. Uh, I, I think justice Haynes will be the, uh, the new Terry on. He's obviously got to play more. <laughs> and I, we, we believe he will, by the way, there's a reason justice Haynes, we haven't got to him on the count for guys that played little last year, spoiler alert. Uh, justice is uh, pretty high up in these rankings. That's awesome. I, I I think everybody's like waiting on that just so we can all talk about Justice Haynes. To me, he's we're, a slam we stuck dunk. in Justice Haynes talk when he's not even on the count. Now, so. Exactly. Slam dunk to be a great player. Slam dunk. I mean, he slam dunk to be a great player. If you're like, boy, Justice didn't play much. I'm worried he's not. Stop worrying right now. He's a dude. Jan Miller's a really good player too. That, that those are going to be two, uh, and I, I want Jam Miller to keep wearing all those uh, pads, like arm pads and stuff. I think that's sort of his, you know, his trademark. Yeah, and I'm going to call it all year trademark pending uh, the Jam and Justice show, and uh, it, it's really the number one thing to rely on on offense. Really, I mean, I, I think they're going to discover this spring. Kalen DeBoer will discover this spring. I don't know what we can do on offense, but I know we can run the ball with those two, and and they'll yep. build it around that. I mean, I know people think we're going to throw it 50 times and be Michael Penick's uh, offense out there. And I think we will to a degree, but I think the best offensive minds build it around their best players and Alabama's best players on offense, the jam and justice right. show. That's right. All right. That's going to do it for today's podcast. We'll be back tomorrow with more. Hey, get your friends to subscribe. Listen, we're like at not, almost 9,600 subscribers. We want to get to 10,000. We really do. We, we're dying for it. It's just a, you know, it's just a nice, goal to have. And uh, so tell people to sign up. We want to get to 10,000. Please help us out. We will dance at your weddings, your various weddings. We'll all dance at them. Um, I think it might be more tempting for these people if we don't dance at their wedding. <laughs> it's a good point. We won't come to your wedding. <laughs> Even if you invite us, we never just won't visit. come. Yeah. Subscribe and we'll never visit your house. <laughs> if you, if you want to see 
more of us on the podcast and less of us in real life, subscribe. <laughs> uh, all right. That's going to do it for today's podcast. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.